Olympics. And I was able to bring life-saving medications to market. So very, very fortunate. And then in 2008, what happened was there was economy downturn. And when economy tumbles, everything gets touched. So of course, biotechnology was no new industry not to have remained touched or it was touched. And then what happens was there came a day of layoffs and here I This is Scratch Your Own Itch, the one show that delivers the conversations that we're afraid to share, but need to. This show is all about creating a life worth living. I'm Logan Tyler Nelson, and I'm your host. So you're going to hear conversations with creators and entrepreneurs talk about what they do, their current and past traumas, how they became who they are, and what they are truly curious about. This is the show where we talk about the things we think about a lot, but need to talk about more. Please take note that this show is not a substitute for actually creating a life worth living, because this show will stir your beliefs, make you question what it means to create a life worth living. So my promise to you is to always give you one question to answer for yourself today, to start turning your dreams into a reality. My curiosity question for you is, what systems are you setting up for yourself so you can automate your life for more success? Okay, let me ask you this again. What systems are you setting for yourself so you can automate your life for more success? All right, Mm. let me set the tone. You wake up and you check your phone. 61 unread emails. You start replying and two hours later, you're finally done. And all of a sudden, you realize, I'm absolutely drained. And you just spent the last two hours of your precious morning miracle on solving other people's problems. And all this creative juice that you once had at one point is gone. So how do you set up systems so you don't have your endurance on all your creative juices go bye bye Well, if this is you, I want to let you know that you're not alone. And honestly, you're in luck. Because my topic of my show today is with Divya Parikh. And she has so many skills One, including how she sets up systems so she doesn't have to spend all of her day just replying to emails or setting up social medias or doing all that non-creative fun stuff, but actually automating those systems so she has more liberty and freedom to do the things she loves, which is writing books. I mean, she's written Four internationally endorsed books by the likes of Brian Tracy, Marshall Goldsmith, Kevin Harrington, James Molinchek, and the one and only Sharon Wynn, or Sherry Wynn. She is also a speaker and owns a coaching business helping authors to write their books and get them published. So, without further ado, meet the one and only Divya Parrick. Hey, Divya, thank you so much for coming on Scratch Your Own Itch. Oh, thank you so much for having me on your show. Really appreciate it. And what you're doing on your show is phenomenal because you are helping people get their time back. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I I really uh, I, I want to make more time because, honestly, it's so finite for people. And I think that... Uh, it's not the only mission of the show, but whenever you get a little tip on how to save 
a little bit more time in your life to actually start doing the things you love, um, it's easier to really start doing the creative work that you aspire to make in your life. And um, so, yeah, but anyways, I want to learn more about you. And the first question I like to ask is, is the mission of the show is really to scratch your own itch. And that means um, you have a problem and you know how to solve this problem. But when you're solving this problem, you're trying to solve it for others too. So I want to ask you, when you're scratching your own itch, how are you doing that in your own life? Mm, great question. So here's what I'll share with you, that regardless of who we are, wherever we are, there are a few things that are common to all human beings. We all dream. We all do things to get joy, passion, happiness, fun, and freedom in our lives. Now, that said, that's uh, my goal as well. And beyond that, my goal is to bring transformation to as many people as I can. And now, how am I doing that? Is by continuously working on myself because I see myself as a continuous learner. So many times we say that, you know, we don't know things. But then if we take it even one level deeper, you'll find that you don't know what you don't know. There's so many things you don't know what you don't know. And if we were to take a pizza pie and say that, you know, how much is it that we know? It would probably, in my case at least, I'm not going to speak for anybody else. It's probably going to be one very tiny slice that I know about. So my goal is to continuously learn. And it's not only about learning, it's about absorbing it. It's about integrating it and then becoming what I'm learning. So that's how I scratch my itch. Oh, I love it. That's so cool. That is so, so cool. Um, can I get a little bit deeper and ask you about your story and, and more so like that big thing that you struggled with in your own life? where you kind of had to change in order to um, start uh, living the life that you wanted. Absolutely. So I've got a lot of directions in my life. What would you like to know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's, I know for a fact that everyone has that pain point that they have with themselves it could be chronic idea syndrome it could be um, they're overweight so they started uh, working out and they wanted to uh, actualize it for other people and how, how they started feeling better and or or maybe with their chronic idea syndrome they started to uh, take on these new habits and, and these tools to really start uh, gaining more clarity in life so when I ask mm. you that, like, what is that sort of like problem that you have? What is, what is your struggle that you have with yourself that by solving that you're helping other people? And I, I want to get like super specific because I kind of I'm, I'm going to call you out. You kind of beat around the bush. I think there's a, a there's a deeper story inside there. <laughs> you can call me out anytime you want, Logan, because that's one thing I always say that, you know, you cannot improve till you see the mirror. So. Absolutely. So here's what I'll share. I have been on this journey for quite a long time. And let's go into specific. If you're going to go into specific, we'll look at one of the things that I've been able to help myself and help others. So while I was in corporate world, I was thrilled to be part of uh, biochemistry, biotechnology, because that's uh, what I come by education and my life meandered through several scientists accommodating uh, sometimes, you know, your professor's whims when you're doing research and sometimes it's just, in other people and a lot of different things happening and then also complexities and complications of research where you're searching and you're researching, searching and researching. So as one of my mentors used to say, it's all about like banging your head against the wall. And yet, even after you've banged your head, you have the determination and patience to continue on that path. So very fortunate to have lived that life where I was part of a very meaningful and fulfilling work where I was leading multi-million dollar projects and 
I was able to bring life-saving medications to market. So very, very fortunate. And then in 2008, what happened was there was economy downturn. And when economy tumbles, everything gets touched. So of course, biotechnology was no new industry not to have remained touched or it was touched. And then what happens was there came a day of layoffs and here I am who has pri- who has taken pride in her whole life that, you know, other people are priorities in my life and I think about them, I care for them. And that day I was standing in a corner thinking about, oh, I have a young family and it's a great, great, great possibility that my husband who was an IT may get laid off. So here I'm thinking, dear God, you know, is there any way you can save my job? Let it not be me. So by the end of the day, I could not look myself in the mirror. I felt powerless and I did not want to feel that. So after the reflection and lots and lots of soul searching, I found out that, you know, coaching was the direction that I wanted to take. And Moving forward, like, you know, I come from a science background, so you're always kind of like pre-planning things and you're always putting hypothesis. So as a scientist, you're open-minded too because you know that this is a hypothesis you have created that said it doesn't mean that it's going to be true. You've done your work, but you're open to possibilities. And I continued working as I was putting my plan in place as I was implementing it, I was invited to write a book and participate in an anthology. So that was, I was like, okay, you know, how difficult can this be? I have written so many protocols. I've written so many reports. I have been presenting to large conferences where I've done my presentations and I've created a story to tell based on data. So if I can write reports around hardcore data, then how hard it can be writing a book and that too, it's an anthology. So I went with them with that mindset and lo and behold, I was ready to eat my words. For several months, I knew I would have a type, I would write in a notebook, I would go and dictate in the phone. I tried, man, everything under the sun. And there was just this block that I could not write it. And then being a scientist, you know, it's always like I grab a problem heads on and I say, okay, what can be done? Let's uh, go ahead and research it. I've researched it and worked with world-class masters and learned so much about it. And I was very fortunate because one thing that I've done after I took my coaching certification, I've had two coaches by my side every year thereon. Because one of the first things that one of my instructors that told me was, Divya, no matter who you are, where you are in your life, you always have blind spots just like a car. And no matter how long you have driven, even when I drive to this day, when I'm making a lane change, I look over my shoulder to make sure that nobody's in my blind spot. And coaches became my strategy, my mirror. You can call a mirror who reflects back. Who have told me what are my blind spots and help me continue working on it. So that said, uh, one of my coaches said that, Divya, looks like you already have a process that you were using in science world So why don't you come up with the process and see how it plays out for you? And what I found was not only one book was written, not only two books. I continued writing books and approximately, I think, so now I have 12 books, 12 or 13 books. I've kind of lost count of myself of how many books I've written. And then I found that once I had delved into that process, every single time I wrote, I could finish at least smaller books within a month and a half and for longer books or books with more substance to it and more complexities in three months. And then I started helping others and rest as they say is history where I've been able to not only support myself, but support others. 
and wow. scratch my itch, so to speak. Wow. Is that deep enough for you? Are you someone who's trying to build your online presence and you're finding out that it takes some time, a lot of time, and someone might recommend, hey, you should write a book and become an expert in that area so you're known for that one thing. Well, a book, <laughs> as I've gone through it and come to find, takes a long time. It takes about another year and a half. But that doesn't mean that you can't become known for your thing. I think the best way to do this is through starting a podcast and getting a website out there that can archive all the work and the content and the area of expertise that you want to be known for. Because you want to be the go-to guy when someone thinks of, hey, I want to get in really good shape, but heck, I don't know what it's going to take. And you know that your area of supremacy, as I dub it, is to get someone into really great shape. And what if you could bring on other influencers that already have a name for themselves online onto your own podcast to create content to rank in really well to be to be the go-to guy when it comes to being the enthusiast that you wish you were online to be the influencer that you wish you were online to be known as the expert if you look at what's been happening in the world it's all going towards online so if you're still running a business and overheads high, please reach out. Logan at LoganTylerNelson.com And this is a service where it's a done-for-you podcast. We'll get you systematically hooked up to where you have a website, your podcast, and it really gets you on the roll to where your job is just to come and have the fun part, which is interviewing the experts that you wish you could align yourself with more and to start actually making some noise and disrupt this whole idea that it takes another year to get really known for your area of expertise. So if this at all interests you, just email me, logan at logantylernelson.com. Again, that's logan at logantylernelson.com. Yeah, uh, that is, um, <laughs> that's good. That's good. I really, um, well, hey, you, you kind of d- got me really, really, really thinking about how you actually uh, produce 12 books. I mean, you got to have a lot of time to do that because anybody who ever tried to write a book will say, I don't know if I have the time to do that, right? So how do you, uh, how do you kind of automate your day? or your email system, or maybe Facebook, social networks, and stuff like that, um, to not, like, what kind of tech tools do you use so you don't spend all your time just answering emails or spend all your time, you know, updating social medias? Mm, That's a great question. So let me share with you. There is more deep and more insight to it rather than just using automated tools. So let's take a look at it from a different perspective. Your computer, your social media, your emails, who is doing the action? Who is the subject over here? Uh, would you, uh, I guess me, is that what you're asking? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. So similarly, it is me, right? When I'm doing all of these things, I'm the subject, I'm the person, I'm the action taker who's taking it. And similarly, in case of our listeners, it is you. So whoever it is, you are the person in charge, whoever is doing the action. So now I automate at two different levels. I automate my brain and then I automate my software system. So first is I train my brain coming from a neuroscience and 
emotional chemistry background as to how is my day going to look like? How much of a discipline do I have? How much of a new habit I'm creating that regardless of what I want to do in the morning, I'm not going to do it. So I automate myself in that place. Like I look at my value systems. I create my value systems in such a way and I support my clients to create value systems in such a way that you don't have, even have to think about it. So for example, in the morning, if I'm going to do my first thing that I'm going to do is my meditation, then I'm just going to do it. So that's one of the places that I automate. Now, the second place where I automate is I create my schedule in such a way that, okay, I'm going to check my emails. I have a time for myself between 10 to 11, between then somewhere late in the afternoon and then somewhere at the end of the day. So when I have that automated and of course, now let's take a look at CRM systems. If you're not talking about certain of the CRM systems, I've got active campaign. I've got lead pages, landing pages. So let's say if somebody is logging in, somebody is logging in to their lead, well, not on the lead page account. Let's say if they've logged into their email or they're on Facebook and they see one of my free gifts and they say that, okay, you know what? I want to opt in. So they opt in and what happens is they get connected with my lead page and active campaign. So not only lead page will send out the automated lead magnet that I have promised my reader or my this uh, would be person that I may be partnering with or I may become friends with or I may just have a connection right or they may be my prospective mm -hmm. customer so lead page sends the thing and then lead page also takes them to an automated thank you page and now what I've done for automation over there is that in some cases, I'll have a beautiful email sent out. In some cases, I have recorded videos from ahead of time. So that way, if I want my prospective partner, client, reader connection to get to know me, they get to know me through my video. So all that is happening without my doing it. Then another place is something like call post planner. So for my social media, what I do is I schedule my posts way ahead of time. Like, let's say I schedule that time that, okay, every weekend, that's what I'm going to do. Because what it does is that you just don't want to post something that's irrelevant. The key is you're developing a relationship with people anywhere you go. Same thing, like, you know, if I'm on your podcast, what I'm thinking about is how can I best serve your readers? How can I best impact them? How can I really make this beneficial for them? So now even if you're going and posting stuff on your post planner, you're thinking, so now if you do every week, some people do it a month, you can do that either, but then your posting will be different. So now if you also want to like look in trends and all that, you can do it weekly, you can do it bi-weekly. There is no right methodology. It's basically what is your authenticity? What is it that you want to share? Who is your tribe? Now, everything when pulled together is going to create your world of influence. It's going to create your own world and how you're going to live in it, how you're going to show up in it. So post planner is another thing. So I do not have to go on my social media all the time. And what I do is, again, time is allocated for social media no more than 20 minutes a day where I respond to my friends because it's important to have those relationships because so many times what happens is somebody's recently I'll share that one of my very close friends, not to name her name because she's going through pain, her dog of like 10 or 11 years is going through a surgery and his chances of survival are very, very less. So I take that time to build that connection back, being there for my friends. And as far as like social media is concerned, then, you know, I'll kind of go through the notifications. If people have responded to me, I'll make sure I respond to them. And it just seems uh, fairly straightforward. That's what I do. Hey, Logan Tyler Nelson here. 
I would so appreciate it if you took some time to hit the subscribe button. I really want to just honestly live and give. Why? Because I was told when I was young that if you're feeling down, the best way to feel better is by lifting someone up again. So in an effort to make someone feel less alone, please hit the subscribe button so the podcast has a better chance of being found in making someone feel less alone. And if you're feeling down, hey, it can help you. Know that by hitting that subscribe button, you just did someone a huge favor. So thank you for hitting that subscribe button. I love it. I love this. Um, You gave some really amazing tools to uh, use, like Post Planner and and, um, also how you set up your lead pages. I just want to say thank you so much. I think that's some amazing value that you just gave anyone that needs to listen to that to sort of uh, create some more time and space. But, you know, there's about five minutes left. So I want to get into scratching surface curiosity questions, which is just to learn a little bit more about you, make someone feel less alone. And um, if you're ready to get into that, I'd love to get into that with you. Let's go for it. Okay. Uh, The first question is uh, sort of a givings giving question, which is, you know, maybe you've had that thought recently that uh, you felt ashamed about having or embarrassed about having of yourself. Um, and when I ask you that, what is that thought? Hmm. I'm not sure of the question, Logan. All right. So, (laughs) (laughs) the, so like, all right, for example, I've been embarrassed, uh, because sometimes I'll walk down the street and I'll have this, um, you know, like thought about just like totally, punching this guy for having the worst looking face he just looks so negative and he makes me want to like just hate the world and I'll have that thought and I feel bad about wanting to punch that guy in the face but hey like I know that that's just a thought it doesn't mean that's that's who I am and I'm embarrassed by having and I'm ashamed by having the thought but I know that I by having the thought and not acting on it um they're just thoughts that's all they are. So, mm. yeah, anything like that. Oh, so like uh, if I've had an embarrassing thought. Yeah. Well, to me, yeah. Hmm. I come from a different mold. So for me, an embarrassing thought is like, you know, when I'm kind of vegging on a couch and maybe watching a movie. Because I've come to a point where I do not watch much TV at all. So then I'm like, oh, you know, I talk about discipline to everyone. And here I'm just kind of sitting and vegging, like I'm spending my time watching TV, watching movie, like, you know, just kind of thoughtless watching. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're human. Thank you. Oh, of course. Of course, I'm human. (laughs) Totally human. (laughs) Make mistakes every single day, Logan. Well, that's the thing. And that's why I asked that question is because, um, we're never really delivered the rawness and that's why I like podcasts and online radio is such a, an awesome medium to consume is because it's, the, it's, it's, it's one of the most raw forms that you can get, but really deep down, like there's, there's a fakeness to it all. There's edited moments, there's doctored YouTube videos, there's doctored Netflix movies and it's all edited. And so you have to realize that even when you're listening to this now, what you're getting is not always what you're receiving. So when people are on these productivity podcasts or, you know, like uh, these, these YouTube videos where, where they look so good and their body looks great and or when they're reading these books and everything seems so great on the surface, but it's really, honestly, those dark moments and those harder, weaker um, sort of moments that we have that show us that we're human. And so that's why I like to ask that question. Oh, yeah. No, like, for example, like uh, I started eating on a chocolate yesterday. And I usually kind of try to bring like, you know, smaller box of chocolate. I ended up eating half a box of it. So. (laughs) Oh, boy. Oh, boy. (laughs) Yeah. It's, you know, we all are human beings. And the key to know is that we all go through our moments of uh, humanity. I Here's how I see it. I don't call them embarrassment or anything like that. They're just moments of humanity. And the 
best part to do is accept yourself with compassion and accept others with compassion. Wow. Yeah. Um, shameless plug. Uh, if you do have a problem with eating, I, I do have a, a program out there where uh, just for $20 a month, you can have a, a group of people where you use or, are set accountable to your new eating habits. So you take a picture of whatever you're about to eat and uh, also be in a group where you guys can work together to lose weight because you can never outwork a bad diet. So, um, yeah, uh, I think that's for anybody that is um, really trying hard to, to lose weight and also get tips and insider looks on how you can eat more uh, awesome, delicious food but not feel so guilty about doing it and um, not do it alone too because that's my main Main mission of everything in life is to make someone feel less alone. So mm -hmm. um, just one more question, though, Divya, because we're uh, rounding out in 25 minutes already. And so I just want to ask uh, anybody that's listening right now, how can they support you and, and, uh, and get a hold of you if they'd like to? Oh, absolutely. So they can reach out to me at... Uh, www.diviaparik.com and I'll spell it D as in David, I, V as in Victor, Y, A, P as in Paul, A as in Apple, R as in Robert, E, K as in Kevin, H as in Harry. And you can contact me over there. There's a, a free gift on my website as well. It's, it's about how can you achieve your goals and dreams and how can you have the vision and if they want to reach out to me directly, my email address is contact at diviaparik.com. So it is C-O-N, T as in Tom, A as in Apple, C as in Charlie, T as in Tom, at David, India, Victor, Yellow, Apple, Paul, Apple, Robert, Edward, Kevin, Harry. So contact at diviaparik.com. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I'll put that in the show notes so you don't have to uh, remember that. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, just one more question. Do you uh, kind of wish that I would ask you one question or, or what would you like to leave us off on? The floor is totally yours. No, go for it. Oh, well, I just want to say then uh, thank you so much, Divya, for coming on Scratch Your Own Itch. I really appreciate it. This has been a uh, wonderful 26 minutes and I, I can't thank you enough and I wish we could even go longer but I realized lately that people are consuming uh the shorter episodes and they're really asking me lately to shorten them up and so I think this was great I uh, got your story got an awesome insider look on how you automate your day to make more freedom for creating all those books and, and actually having the time to do the things you want so um yeah, thank you so much, Divya. Oh, thank you, Logan, for having me on your show because you're doing a fantastic job because, you know, that's what my goal is to, to help people create their message because regardless whether you are living your story consciously or non-consciously, you have a message. So just a quick note to your listeners is make sure that you get your message out there, whether it's in the form of a book or whatever you're doing, make sure you do that. So, and thank you again so much for what you are doing for people. And thank you for having me on your show. 100%. Absolutely. Well, we'll talk later, Divya. Thanks again. Thank you. Take care. Take care. There's another episode of Scratch Your Own Itch. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to support the show by listening. Um, the biggest compliment you could ever pay me is just by sharing this because honestly, it doesn't take much and it feels so good when people create something and take time. And when I see someone take time to create something that really just changed my day either made me feel less alone, maybe put a smile on my face, made me laugh, made me feel wiser. I always want to share it with the world because why? When I share something that resonates with me, 
why not share it? I mean, that's just kind of the thing that goes around and it's free. It takes no time at all other than just a click of the button, share on either Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, any of those social media platforms would be great to share this. So I really appreciate it. And I want to say that um, anybody who's looking to gain authority or expertise in their area and they don't want to take another year or year and a half to write a book and wait until that's published, I think the best way is right now is to start a podcast. So if you're at all interested in starting a podcast, if you meet the certain requirements, I would love to help you with a podcast and also get a website going for you as well. And this is not an easy task. It's hard to actually get it done and get it out there. So every now and then we need some help and I'm here for you. So please reach me at Logan at LoganTylerNelson.com if you're interested at all. And don't ever forget, you matter and you're enough.